so this is Calcat the Calcatster. And, uh, yeah, um, I was uh, going through the library of the Creature Features show. They've done hundreds, probably about a hundred of these videos so far. Uh, they've done, they've actually done the Milpitas monster twice, 2019 and 2022. Can't remember, I guess Yeah, just recently they did it again. They did the shorter version, the second time, called it Returns. Uh, they had Robert Burl and they had Stephen. Um, the, the, uh, the, yeah, Stephen Wethen. Yeah, Robert Burl and Stephen Wethen, uh, who have met. Uh, during some of the uh, some of the events, um, Robert Burl used to go to our church, at, and um, and he uh, and he is the, he was the film teacher when some of my half siblings were uh, for the movie. So <laughs> uh, yes, and some of my regular siblings were. Uh, the version that they showed in 2019 of the Milpitas monster was the version from. The longer version, the director's cut from 2014, that was the DVD release, director's cut. Uh, the one that they showed in 2022 looks to be the the other one. Or at least uh, sort of cut up a little bit more. It's the same movie. It looks grainier. It looks like it's maybe the 2012 one? No, it's weird. On the 2019 video, I did comment that you can find me and some of the siblings on the, at a certain point on the video. If you're looking through there and find... <laughs> And uh, I, I did look for Dad's cameo, but couldn't find it. It must have got cut for time uh, on the second version, but it's on the first one. Anyway, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Milk Peaches Mosh. So, 1976 Robert Burl movie from the Air High School. I have reviewed it a bunch of times. I went to two Milk Peaches Monster events, uh, I believe 2015 and 2016, on two of these channels. I think it was mainly on the All Location Cat channel. Mars cards, and I went to the movie, and then I went again in 20, 2016 and, and, and saw it, um, and, and and met some of the cast, including the guy who played the penguin. And there's not not the Batman penguin, but the character penguin, who who was uh, past middle age and quite uh, quite like one actually. Um, uh, Joe, uh, but but Joe House, who was the mayor back then, he went on to his daughter went on to be on the Grand Ole Opry. This is as of or to go to the Grand Ole. I guess she went out there to where the Grand Ole Opry is, is what happened. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> um, so there, there's, uh, yeah, uh, the Joe House and his, uh, his ice cream suit. <laughs> and you have the, uh, the kids gathered around, like, the, 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 uh, the person, the vendor person out in front of the house. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's this guy selling soda pop and, and it was an ice cream truck kind of thing, but it was a car. Went around the neighborhood. Totally innocent. This is like the 70s. It was totally innocent. And, yeah, and, yeah. Because he'd have a store out of the back of his vehicle. Kind of sounds a little sketchy nowadays, but back then, it was the 70s. So. <laughs> uh, in the, in the um, scene oh, it's, uh, that it was... That it was Barely part of for a fraction of a second. Uh, I was probably about six, so I don't remember much about it, but <laughs> it was there. Um, so yeah, uh, but uh, yeah. So anyway, um, the movie premiered at the Sarah Twin Theater a couple of times. They would play it at the Sarah Twin Theaters, and uh, they would show uh, the tenth that uh, tenth anniversary in '86 when I was about fifteen. It was that bad. And, so, uh, uh, it's around the same time that it, that was mentioned to one of my teachers in high school, who uh, at the time who was all still. Uh, uh, it was years later. It was the '80s, and he was all like, "I didn't get to be in that movie. They wouldn't let me." Oh well, yeah, just because I was too young or something. Oh, wouldn't let me be in it. Uh, the teacher, yeah, he was upset about that. To which my half brother, who was around, said, "Why is Steve still upset?" <laughs> he knew what it was. So was the guy still upset about that? <laughs> Good to be in the movie. He was a freshman. It's not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, whatever. Well, this other Steve, though, so somebody else. Uh, there's a props and movies. These guys are kind of famous for some of their um, other props and things. Um, the, at the event in 2015 and 2016, uh, the uh, the guy in the monster suit was known. 
but he was a, a local celebrity, so, <laughs> anyway, he was a known local celebrity, so, yeah, uh, this is no sort of, sort of, kind of, uh, Anyway, that was pointless. So yeah, they had Steve do the part. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the uh, the local celebrity was a kid. Uh, well, a young kid, but ten years older than roughly. Playing the 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 monster at the events was not the original character, of course. Obviously, um, yeah, it was in the suit. You no, know, they built a new suit and you know, a little better. Uh, so yeah. Um, I did a thing where I did like, uh, I went around and filmed the places where the movie was shot. It looked quite a bit different now. Uh, inspired by that in the 2016 re-release of the DVD, uh, that Robert Burl added a scene filming the Minuteman in front of the newer City Hall building, which is completely rebuilt in the 2000s. They completely rebuilt it in the mid-2000s. Um, and, uh, and the Minuteman thing was put up in 2016, so they threw that in there as a joke. Yeah, <laughs> on the uh, final, uh, they named it after George Keyser. Uh, yeah, and some of the backstory that isn't in here, which is funny, um, isn't that the, the actor that they got to play, George Keyser was actually a Hollywood actor, had been vaudeville and stuff, Hollywood actor. Um, the others weren't, they were all amateurs. So, if Red Letter Media ever does this movie, I keep suggesting they should, uh, do it as a review. <laughs> and uh, and because uh, it's not best of the worst, it's not bad. It's just uh, send up to, to like, the, sort of the toxic movies of the time period, and uh, the environmental disaster movies, and uh, and uh, toxic like radiation and stuff like that, and and also uh, send up to other fifties B of horror movies twenty years earlier. So yeah, it, it's it's not just the nostalgia of the actually in Milpitas. Not far from where they actually, the Joe House house actually, it's not far from here. Uh, uh, the Joe House house is uh, is uh, on the street, two streets down, and it is a uh, a daycare now. It's somebody else owns it. It's a daycare. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let's see. The, you know, the city hall building from it was torn down in the two thousands, um, rebuilt. This big lavish thing that looks kind of like, like a ship now. Um, yeah, and the, um, yeah, the, uh, the place where they filmed the Frontier Village slash, uh, uh, carnival set was, uh, actually the carnival. <laughs> the Frontier Village is what it was called. And the carnival would set up in the summer and do, like, the, the spring and summer. Maybe they'd have a, a season. Not far from Great America, which existed too, but ours was in Milpitas. And so they would have uh, the old Ford plant. And the old Ford plant... Uh, cl uh, was, was still around, and they at that point it wasn't closed yet. And they allowed them to to use in there. Uh, they did close down by 1979-80, and uh, and they still did it for a while, and then they stopped doing them doing the frontier village thing. They also did parades and things like that. Uh, so that carnival was in the parking lot of the fort. So if you want to go to, back to the spot where that carnival actually was, you go to the Great Mall of the Bay Area. That's what the Ford plant is now. It's a great mall of the Bay Area. And you go out to and between um, roughly the Century Theaters in the back and uh, Home Depot, right there in the parking lot. And that's where it was. <laughs> so there you go. So I just hit the parking lot and uh, right in front, probably, well, Coles, in front of Coles. Yeah, in the park. Yeah, that's where it was. In the parking lot. You know, and, and Dick's Sporting Goods is there now, <laughs> next to it. Uh, yeah, so that's cool. So if you want to go there, uh, the, uh, the cozy kitchen is gone. There was some there was some consternation whether the cozy kitchen was torn down to put in the bike place, or whether it wasn't uh, the uh, it wasn't torn down. Part of the building still exists, and and part of it was a palm reader on one corner, and um, and a comic shop. And as a comic shop, Space Cats Comics and Cards was there. Well, they moved from down the street from town center to that to that corner, into that historic building, and they were there up until the COVID thing happened, and they kind of didn't reopen. So the COVID thing happened, and they didn't reopen. So it's closed. 
Uh, across the street is the, uh, the the former bar. It got re, uh, re uh, where George Keister comes in and out of Preston Cozy Kitchen. That is located on Abel Street, the Abel Street overpass, which my father helped to put in back in, when he was mayor. Earlier, <laughs> sixty-eight, seventy-two, and seventy-eight. Uh, so it's in sixty-eight and seventy-two, uh, sixty-eight for that one. And the Abel Street overpass, and and they filmed the turn over the garbage truck thing. It was a model. And then there was a practical effect of they get a crane and tipped over it. <laughs> but yes, uh, that was right there next to what is was back then the elementary school or the post office. I think it was a post office at that point. And and most of that building got gutted because they rebuilt it as the library. They moved the town center library in the 2000s. And they moved that to this old historic building left the building in the middle in the shell and then built the library around it. So the building's still there. So you can go to the Mill Pieces Library. That's where that building was. Uh, so the so Abel Street, go down and Abel Street, down Abel and Main Street, Abel Street is the cozy kitchen where it was. And there is the uh, across the street was used to be the bar. It's now an Indian restaurant. But it's still there. They gutted that and they rebuilt it. So it doesn't look the same. Uh, it kind of looks similar. They They... they left some of the roof intact. Mm. The funny thing about the Joe House house scene on the on the other street, three streets down, is they filmed that three times because they were, this is stuff that's not on here. I'm just going on stuff that was from the making of, from what I heard from the making of. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so I was going on because we did conventions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, uh, uh, so they were doing a, um, a thing, and uh, the house scene, they were filming the house scene, and they kept showing the same foothill going back over and over again, and going back to the foothill. They ended up on our street, and they were doing it over there, and then they went back over there. So they did two different streets, two different takes, because all the tract houses looked the same. So, so that street scene literally would have been a minute and a half long as they turned the corner, but they made it look like it was four minutes. The magic of movie making. <laughs> yes. And they did not destroy the 36 TV tower. At the end, uh, they destroyed a model of it. Yes. <laughs> but yes. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, ironically, then they wouldn't be able to broadcast creature features back in the day. Because 36 tower held the TV station. In. <laughs> yes, and, and, yes and, that, and that scene with the Dr. L Dr. Loomis or whatever his name is. Not Loomis, but something similar. The guy with the cigar, that is actually Bob Wilkinson from Creature Features, who was in this movie. And, uh, yeah. He's in it. And, uh, <laughs> chewing scenery. Literally chewing scenery. What you guys need is an Odorola. <laughs> uh, what's that? A monster detector. It's silly. It's supposed to be. It's silly. Come on. It's it's awesome that like the movie had video distribution in the 80s and got as far as the East Coast and there were like copies of it on the East Coast not knowing where Bill Peters even is. Bill Peters was also famous for the movie The River's Edge, uh, which they said was Sacramento in the movie The River's Edge, but it was Bill Peters uh, for a, a murder that happened in the 70s. Uh, but they changed the things around in the movie in Sacramento. But, but in this case, it's a fun, wacky sort of comedy, um, goofy horror movie, silly thing with a rubbery a monster. <laughs> so, and, and the fact that it was a, uh, originally started out as that short film, as they said in here, started out with this little short film idea with, a, with the pink cards. I have one of those pink cards somewhere. Got one. <laughs> and I got the 84 one, too. My nephew had the 84 one. And I have the 84 one with the orange paper. Wow, that's the 84 one. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I have those somewhere. Mm. The archives. <laughs> yeah, so... Mm, that's a big deal. We we're making, making a movie. It started out as this little joke thing and bl blossomed into this... Before the age of the internet, before the age of all that. You know, blossomed into this whole town gets involved in this uh, sci-fi horror movie. It was just awesome. Um... Yeah, and I was six years old when it was finished. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm. 
four years later on the set of the Mantika set of the Dukes of Hazard, and got to see the, some of them filming that with the, the General Lee being chased by those military jeeps, colored jeeps. Yeah, yeah that was cool too, but that was different. Um, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, it was an unplanned set appearance. I was not supposed to be there. Just happened to be that a bunch of people were in the background in the set at the store, general store thing, and there was like, oh well, leave the leave the passerbys in the in the movie, in the episode, it's fine. It'll, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so that was in the episode, but yeah, uh, you couldn't see me though. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, so uh, it's, hmm, I didn't have, I mean, except for yeah, I didn't become famous from doing the. Uh, doing appearances and anything, so it isn't like that, um, except for the, <laughs> the martial arts school I used to train at doing an appearance in a, in a couple of cheesy ninja movies in the 90s, <laughs> that was a bad, and, and a weird German one, where it was German, it wasn't that kind of German, it was an innocent German one, about, about martial arts and working out, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, hmm. yeah, and in the early 2000s, I was in a. It was in an art house, an artsy, an artsy crime, gay crime, crime thriller, called Nessen Dorma, which also was German. I don't know why, but it was called No One Sleeps. And my, my sister, my sister had a had a casting call and said, "How'd you like to be in a movie?" And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> what is it?" Well, I don't know. <laughs> so what happened? This go. I ended up in this movie uh, in the background. Giving advice to the director that we probably shouldn't have. Um, <clears throat> well, he was doing this scene all wrong. There was this scene in this movie, that's in Dorma. The director did 25 takes of this scene with a guy bopping another guy in the face. You know, poof, you know. And then there would be a, like a, a make-out scene. Because like, he was his ex, he was his boyfriend and they were having a lover spat. And poof, you know, punch him in the face and then fake blood. Poof, 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 like pouring fake blood squibs on the guy in the... His face. It's kind of a strange scene. It was surreal and dreamy and weird. And, and, and uh, <laughs> we're in the audience. We're, we're not supposed to say anything. Uh, the, our scene was in the um, in the diner, and we were supposed to pretend to eat the Chinese food that had been sitting there all day. So it reeked. Uh, so we're all so we're all pantomiming in the background, going, "Stop saying shit." <laughs> but yes, uh, yeah, our scenes in there. Uh, in the longer version, there's a deleted scene, and we're in there. Yeah, they they kind of cut some of that because yeah, we were pantomiming. The director like, no, we can't use that. <laughs> but yes, uh, the other scene we, we give him because he kept bopping the guy in the face in the scene. They're doing the movie. It's not the movie. It's monstrous. This one I was. I figured I'll just ramble. So, I think so. And we're all like, well, and we finally, I finally blurted out. I said. You're gonna punch him in the face. He's not gonna fall forward. You keep showing him falling forward. Punch him in the face. He's gonna go backward. That's what's wrong with it. I am the director. I know what I'm doing. No, he didn't. He didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> he kept going like he's gonna fall forward. He's going to fall forward. Even the actors, all that kid in the audience is right. <laughs> it does not make any sense. Why wouldn't I fly backwards? Ah, I am the director. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I wasn't a kid, but that's okay. <laughs> At that point, um, yeah. I don't know what else happened in the movie. It was only that one, <laughs> one day of shooting. Okay, get us out of here. So, yes, um, hmm. But, yeah, they, they're calling this Mil Milpitas Monster Returns, and it's not. I have seen the script for Milpitas Monster Returns. <laughs> they're never going to make that movie. <laughs> Robert Burl and I's idea for the sequel was going to be, uh, it was going to be uh, weird. There was going to be a popcorn monster that was going to attack the, the city. And I was like, oh, no, it, uh, no. And how would you get Milby Desai kids to be in that? Because it had to be Milby Desai, not Ayer. Unless you go to Cal Hills and have them be in it. That kind of would work, though. You know? uh, the, there was no casting involved. It was a really, really preliminary script. There were two other scripts. There was a there was a, an evil monster cat script that this other guy had in mind. This is a 2016, I think, yeah, the premiere. Um, uh, the Evil Cat story ended up being a short film that you can find online. There's a short film, Silicon Valley area, 
short film about an evil cat. It's kind of fun. Uh, that would have been a little too ambitious. My idea would have been more true to the original. <laughs> it would have more like an ecological disaster again. Uh, whereas, whereas they they've the a, a secret lab constructs a cybernetic, of course, a robot, <laughs> of course, a robot out of computer parts. And it assembles and it's a <laughs> and it's like it's like basically Mecha Godzilla meets Macintosh, and Microsoft and they fight each other. Uh, but it's like a Milby's Monster sequel. So it has this giant robotic computer thing, hulking around the city, uh, with computer parts attached to it. Works cards and I did. And they're like, no, no, we're not going to do that either. That's that would be too expensive. What you've written here is two million, two hundred million at least. So pull that off. I don't have that kind of money. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it was a treatment. It wasn't a script. So it was just an idea. Um, yeah, we never wrote it. It would have featured a cameo um, by uh, by my my mother because. My dad was in it. Who other shows up? She's like, she sees the monster coming in and goes, like, where have I seen that before? That would have been funny. So, <laughs> it was a cameo. Um, so <laughs> when I would have played a George, a, 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 a George Keister like character walks in. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up not doing that. I would have been in it. So it would have been sort of like, like, like a like a cheap version of a Sam Raimi movie crossed with a giallo. It probably wouldn't have worked. Um, but they still could do it. Um, giant robot. Of course it's a giant robot. Of course it is. Oh. <laughs> and then they fight, and, and so the final battle would have been at the Great Mall. <laughs> at the Carnival. Which we would have rebuilt the Carnival. Um, and there would have been like a, like a big boss fight. Like a Rock'em Sock'em Robot boss fight between the fly and the robot. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, would have been awesome. But no, no. <laughs> it could still be done. Um, that's Mel Peter's Mouse Returns. So, yeah. Um. <laughs>